Have you ever tried to seesaw with your big brother? Probably not because you guys don't seesaw too much anymore, but this is what a seesaw would look like. And have you ever tried to seesaw with your big brother? It's really hard to do. Or with a little kid that you're babysitting. Here's your little kid that you're babysitting. It's really difficult to seesaw with them. And the reason is because of torque. But you can remedy that situation. So what is torque? Torque is basically work done in a circular direction. Okay, so that means if I have this rod and I push on it, so if I push on it over here, it's going to cause that rod to spin. This is what happens when you have a door. Okay, so you have your door and you push on the door knob over here and when you push on it the door opens okay easy enough so the work you do is opening the door so it's do you see how that this is a curve so that's like circular motion okay so far so good so it's kind of like work done in a circular direction So when we were doing work, work was force times distance, okay? But when we did the work, our force and our distance needed to be in the same direction, okay? So that was work. When we do torque, the difference is, is that your force and your distance are perpendicular to each other. So when I push, do you see I'm pushing perpendicular to the door. So I apply my force perpendicular to the door and that causes the door to open and that causes it to swing in this circular motion. If I pushed in the same direction as the door or against the door here, I would have no, the door wouldn't do anything. It would just sit there. But if I apply that force perpendicular then I get some motion I get some circular motion out of the deal so the general equation for torque is torque it's like a one-legged pie okay pie there's pie so it's like a one-legged pie torque is remember it's like work so it's force times and instead of using D for distance, we're going to use R because it's like the radius and it kind of reminds you that it's a circle. But this force needs to be perpendicular. It's your perpendicular force, your perpendicular force times the distance. And this distance we call a lever arm. Okay, so we call it a lever arm. What is it? Let's go back to our picture. Okay, in our picture, we call this pivot point right here where the seesaw is on the sawhorse we call that pivot point the fulcrum so let's write that down that's a fulcrum and a lot of times when we show it in a picture we just draw a triangle to show that it's going to pivot on that spot so that's where it pivots that's your pivot point and your lever arm is the distance from that fulcrum to where the force is being applied. So that would be R. Okay? So it's from the fulcrum to where the lever arm or to where the force is being applied. So why is it difficult to play seesaw with your big brother? Okay, in the normal case here's your big brother and he's big so we're gonna draw him nice and big he's on the seesaw and here's you and you're little and so you're on the seesaw so who's applying more force here right your big brother is heavier than you are so the force that he's applying is the force of gravity and He's bigger than you are, so his force is bigger than your force because you have a smaller force of gravity. And in a normal seesaw, in a normal seesaw, 
the lever arms are going to be the same. So this distance here, R, is going to be the same as this distance here, R, because our fulcrum is generally in the middle. But if you want to seesaw with your brother, you kind of need your torques to be the same. So the torque applied by your brother is going to be the force of gravity times the lever arm. And the torque applied by you is going to be your gravitational force times that lever arm. Okay, So if our radii are the same, our lever arms are the same, and your brother is applying a bigger force than you are, so if this is a bigger number, then you're going to get a bigger torque. So what does that mean? Your brother's weight is going to cause the seesaw to tilt down this way. Okay, so do you see how that makes it go into a think of a clock, okay, all the way around. Okay, is that clockwise or is that counterclockwise when we're doing that? Okay, he's going counterclockwise. And you are applying your torque and when you sit on it, you're going you're making it go this way. Okay? And you are making it go clockwise. Well, what turns out is since your brother's torque, the counterclockwise torque is bigger than the clockwise torque, then it's going to end up, it's going to have a net torque. Just like you have net forces, you have net torques. It's going to have a net torque in the counterclockwise direction. And so your brother's end is going to end up going down, and your end is going to stay up, and it's going to, you know, he's really going to have to push up. Now he's going to have to apply a force to make the seesaw go back up. Okay? So he's this is what we want to do. We want to go do, 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 but we can't. So how can we fix that? Okay, in order to have it balance, in order to have the seesaw perfectly balanced, we need our counterclockwise torques to equal our clockwise torques so that we end up with a net torque of zero. Just like if you have a net force of zero, you don't change your motion. If you have a net torque of zero, so torques are like work, but they're also kind of like forces. Forces give rise to torques. They can be treated just like um, forces in when we do net stuff. Okay, but if we have a net torque of zero, then it's going to stay all balanced out. So how could we do that? Well, we're not going to change your brother's weight. Okay, so remember it's the force of gravity times the radius or the lever arm, and that's going to equal your force of gravity times your lever arm. So this is still going to be a big number, and this is still going to be a small number. So how can we make this big number times a number equal to this little number times a number? our radii, our lever arms need to be adjusted. So he's going to have basically a smaller lever arm and you are going to have a larger lever arm and then his big his big gravity force times his lever arm his small lever arm will equal your medium times your medium. So big times small equals medium times medium. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take your brother and instead of sitting him here on the outside of the seesaw, we're going to move him closer in. And you can still sit here on the outside of the seesaw. And so his lever arm now is shorter because it's his distance from the fulcrum. His gravity is the same. He's going to apply a torque. Here's a way to figure out if your torque is clockwise or counterclockwise. Your torque is always going to go from where the force is applied 
towards the fulcrum from where the force is applied towards the fulcrum so you're applying your gravitational force here you're going to go towards the fulcrum and so that's how you can tell if it's going to be clockwise or counterclockwise remember a clock the hands on the clock go around that way so that's clockwise so in order to have complete equilibrium your net force will be zero and your net torque will be zero basically what that means is when you're in static equilibrium you have you're either not moving or you're moving at constant speed generally when we're talking about static equilibrium we're talking about things that are stationary and hence the word static equilibrium so if they're stationary the net forces are equal to zero which means your up forces equal your down forces because they have to cancel out and your net torque equals zero so that means your counterclockwise torques will equal your clockwise torques and there may be more than one force being applied so we could have this situation so you could have two objects applying a torque okay one of those objects that has the force of gravity there and it's going to apply a counterclockwise torque and this one has a force of gravity and it's also applying a counterclockwise torque so the sum of those two counterclockwise torques will equal the clockwise torque from the third object so then you go force times lever arm plus force times lever arm is equal to the force times the lever arm and these are the clockwise counterclockwise things and this is the clockwise thing so that would be this force whatever it is times its distance from the fulcrum plus this force this force times its distance from the fulcrum will equal this force times its distance from the fulcrum and when all of those things balance out then you have static equilibrium so we probably since we've got so much force on this side over here so much torque this this guy looks to be a little bit bigger than that guy so he's gonna have a little bit more mass a little bit more force and but we'll probably have to make his lever arm a little bit longer so we'll probably have to move him out here so that he can make this all balance out and you're going to do things like this in your lab so those are the basic ideas behind torque not it's not the be all, all and end all but um, we will apply these in the lab and we will also solve some problems with them in a later lecture just to make life a little bit easier honors physics you're really going to have to pay attention to the later lecture. Regular physics, I think you'll get it from just the lab and you sh and the lab in your worksheet and you should be okay. So regular physics, you're done. Honors physics, continue to the next problem.